Okay, so for this week, uh, I guess we're in week five of the class now, and as per our goals of the um, in Canvas, uh, we are going to start to add some um, e-commerce aspects to a site. Well, first of all, we need a site. So if you have your, from part one of the class perhaps, if you already have a website on a GoDaddy or Bluehost or X10 host or whatever, if you have one of those already, you can use it. If you don't, we're going to use uh, MAMP, or if you want to, Instant WP, uh, to work on a site to keep adding to it. So let's assume that um, if you know what if you know what you're doing with with Instant WP, you want to launch it and, and get your site back. Let's say if you want to use what I'm going to do with MAMP, I'll walk us through the steps again with with MAMP. Now we're going to have to go back to the web design folder and grab the MAMP installation file in CIS 256. So copy that MAMP installation file to your desktop and just run it and do the installation like we did previously. This is something that I would recommend that when we come back on future days of the class, this is your step zero that you need to do. Because after I show it once or twice, you should be able to do it on your own. We had the practice last week of doing it twice. I would say here just to make it a little faster when it asks you what to install. You can turn both of those off. We don't need MAMP Pro. We're not using this MAMP Viewer, so you can turn them off. If you leave them on, it's okay. But it installs faster if you don't install those two extra things. And just the usual. Just go through the whole installation, and then after that gets installed, we'll, we'll continue. We need to create our database. We need to bring back a site. I've got a copy of the site in the network folder, which we'll get to in a moment. So just let that install, and we'll go on. If you have the Instant WP, just start your Instant WP, let that run, and then um, you'll bring back your site, and we'll work with that. If you've got your own site on a real domain and such, log into your real site, and we'll talk about adding e-commerce. This is one of these steps that when you come back on future days, you just want to do this right away because obviously it's no fun just staring at the progress bar. Well, it is moving pretty fast, so that is fun. Once that's done, we will have a site. Well, we'll have a server so that then we can add a site. I guess while that's thinking about its thing, um, I have a copy of last week's site so I guess while that's doing its thing, you also want to copy from the web design folder this site with last week's date. I'm going to copy that to my desktop. So 2019-0702, you can also copy that folder to your desktop while you're waiting for MAMP to install. This is the great thing that I like about using this route of MAMP um, that you can make a copy of any WordPress site and then move it from computer to computer. Or what's very common is that people take their web version, the one that's on the real internet, and they, and they uh, you know, compress it with duplicator and then download it and work on it on their home computer instead of working on it on, on the real internet. That way I can um, do what I need to do offline, prepare it, and then upload it ready to go to the server. And we'll cover that also later, but the big idea is we've already done and we will do again in that we need a database, we need to add the installer files and so forth. But eventually when MAMP installs, you then want to run it and let it activate all of its little uh, green bubbles right there. Eventually, when MAMP installs, you want to run it and then wait for it to power up the Apache 
module, the MySQL module, over the open web start page. any trouble? Did you get your map running and then you click open web to start the page? Okay, so uh, we need to create a database so that we can resurrect the site. From the top over here, tools, we'll go to phpMyAdmin and we will create a database with any name that we want. So I click on that. I will then go to the databases icon at the top can call it anything you want. I'm going to call it WP just to save myself some effort in, um, in giving it a, a longer name. Call that WP. Don't forget to then click Create in order for the database to actually be created. And then on the left side, it'll say we've got database. So I've created a database called WP. <clears throat> if you copied the um, that folder from the network folder, 2019-702, that is the complete site from last week. Well, that folder needs to be put into the right place. I copied it to the desktop, but that's not where it needs to be when we actually want it to run as a real website. So now we need to copy or move your 2019-0702 folder into the htdocs folder. So you can open up an Explorer or File Manager window. And on the C drive, C as in cat, we'll go to local disk C. We'll go into the MAMP folder that we just installed. Into the htdocs folder. And this is where you're copying the site from last week. So obviously, if we're using my site, well, it's going to be my fictional business with my login and all of that. You would, I would prefer that it's your site with your login and all of that. Uh, but you'll be able to manage if you want to use my site. But I would recommend your site because it's going to be your things that you care about. So I'm going to copy the site into the folder and you do need uh, your your site to to be that folder what's in the folder is the installer file and the zip file remember you don't do anything with them out here you you work with these files in the web browser but I'm just showing you that a complete duplicator archive is a folder that has the zip file of everything that your site is including the database plus the installer program but once you've got into htdocs, we need to access this folder from the web browser. So I'll go back to the web browser, localhost slash, the name of your site. Localhost slash, the name of your site, the name of the folder. So in my case, the name of my folder is the date. Let me zoom in on that. 
so I'm typing HTTP localhost slash 2019.0702. That's the name of my folder where my site is at. If I call my, my folder anything else, I obviously need to then put on the address here, localhost slash the name of the folder. Enter. And there's the installer file. There's the zip file. And we'll run through the installer file to bring the site back to life. So this should sound familiar. We did a version of this last week. There will be one little change as we start to resurrect the site. Because like I said, the, the site, if you're using my site, it's my site with my name, my login, my password. Uh, we want to add your name, your login, your password. And we actually have an ability to do that as we resurrect the site. So once you see installer PHP, click on that. Everything seems to say pass. If it doesn't, raise your hand, I'll help you out. But it says it found the archive, it validated it, great. I've read the, uh, the notices, so click next. Okay, so here, um, install database. Well, we should have the knowledge of what we need to do here. The host is localhost, so we'll leave that. The database is the name of the database you created a moment ago. I called mine WP. According to MAMP, the, the user and password to access MySQL, PHE my admin, I mean, is root and root. And I got that from seeing right here. The user and the password in the MAMP start page is root and root. So whatever the name of your database, I called mine WP. If you didn't call yours WP, obviously type what you typed. And um, password is root. Click test at the bottom. You should then say it found your um, it found your items right there, and we'll proceed in a moment. is here. I'll click next. It's just going to confirm and I'll click OK on that to install it. Yes. I'm 
All right, so update data, step three of four. We can leave this alone. Okay, ladies? Ladies? Ladies, do you need, a, do you need anything, ladies? She's just having difficulty with her website. That's it. Okay, you can raise your hand. I'll come help you out. It's trying to update, but it's blocking out. Okay, uh, let me finish my thoughts right here, and then I'll go help you in one moment. So I'm going to go here, step three of four. I'm not going to change anything just yet, so I'll click next. And this next step right here might be a useful one. Um, we are going to uh, log in. But again, this is going to log in with my credentials, and I'm happy to share my credentials. But remember, you'll want to set your own uh, login information in just a moment. So we'll go to login, admin login. And because we're using my site, the login is going to be Victor, and the password uh, is going to be cats. Plural. So for my site, you're using my site, you're borrowing my site, so that's the login. Obviously, if you want it to be your site, on the next screen, remember, you can create a new user, and onto that new user, you can make it up however you want. So log in that way, and then we'll go on. site obviously is a little faster if you're using my site it takes a couple of steps here obviously but this is good practice because this is very common if you're going to do advanced web design stuff you might need to make a copy of the site you log into it and so forth this way so I'll log in And now I've got a site, so it's the Victor's Bakery site. There's not much to it at the moment. And it seems to say there's an update. Don't worry about the update at the moment, but just make a note that there's an update duplicator. So we've got version 1.3.14, and now there's 1.3.16. So I'm not going to update it, but remember that the idea about updates and these other windows. I'll just close these other windows. I just want to focus on my site. So. Okay, good. We set ourselves up in less than 30 minutes. Next time it'll be less than 10 minutes. So uh, we've, got a, we've got a site now available. Um, E-commerce is the ability to sell goods and services. Can anyone give me a definition? What is a good? What is a service? What's the difference? Goods and services. Yes. One is tangible, one is it? One is tangible, one is intangible. Yeah, sure. So this would be a good, this is a thing that I'm selling. So goods are things. Okay. Services, something intangible, something that's not. Okay, what's an example of a service? What can I sell as a service? House cleaning. House cleaning, sure. Uh, public speaking, um, anything, uh, you know, lawyer, uh, lawyering, um, getting hired for a lawyer. Uh, so goods and services, physical things, non-physical things. Okay. Well, uh, with our e-commerce solution, we'll be able to sell those. Sell a physical thing or a not physical thing, goods or services. But wait a minute, there's also real and virtual items. So goods can have the definition also of real or virtual items. So a real item such as this actual real item that I need to ship. Virtual, what might I mean by virtual goods? Like virtual currency in a game. 
virtual currency in a game. Sure, it's uh, in the real world, I have real money, but in a game, it's virtual money. It still has that. Good. So what about also like books or music um, or maybe photos? Maybe you're an artist and you want to sell your photos. Maybe you're a musician, you want to sell your music. You know, for the retro people, they can buy the CD, sure. But for most people, they're going to buy the MP3 or stream it. So that's a good that is virtual, virtual goods. So we have real goods, virtual goods. We have goods, we have services, right? So things to do, perhaps intangible things. And our e-commerce solution will let us sell both or all of those things, one or one or two of those or all of them at once. And the way we do that is by adding uh, an extra feature to WordPress. Because by default, in WordPress, I see I can create a post, I can add a media, I can add pages, but I don't see anything about a product. So we need to add features to WordPress. How do we add features to WordPress? Plugins, yes. Plugins. So let's go over to our plugins screen and add new. We will add new and we will search at the top over here. Let's search e-commerce, the keyword e-commerce. So searching e-commerce, I get a few results. I get 1,590 results, um, which is the good one, which is the bad one, which one works for me. Now, I can, I'm going to give you one answer. That doesn't mean it's the best one all the time. Um, there must be a reason for, them, for there being so many of them. But as we scroll down, I see one over here called WooCommerce. I see one over here called Shop Construct. Uh, I see another one called Equid E-Commerce Shopping Cart. OK, there's lots of results. Um, so the, the thing is, basically, they're all, they're all right and they're all wrong. It depends on what you're trying to do. Um, am I trying to focus on real goods, physical goods? Uh, we didn't even mention, like, for example, subscriptions. Those are um, virtual goods, or virtual services, actually. Uh, you might get some goods out of them, but there's a lot of things that I could sell. Subscriptions, actual, you know, handcrafted jewelry that I make, etc. So in that sense, any one of these could work. The way you would determine the best solution is a couple of ways. We've got, of course, rankings for plugins. And I, I have an answer for you of which one to pick, of course. But let's say you were trying to add chat to your site. What if you wanted to be able to have people chat within your site and make a community or something? Well, I would look up chat or virtual talk or something, and I'd get thousands of results. And I don't have an answer for you which one to pick. I don't have much experience in that. I haven't had any clients that asked for that feature, so I can't give you the full answer. You have to do the research in terms of, let me check how many ratings it has. Let me check how many times it's been used. Is it compatible with my site, and how old is it? So this information here is very valuable. The higher the star rating, the better. Usually, obviously, people are not going to rate something bad very highly. The number of ratings is also good, because right here, this is four and a half stars and four and a half. If I just look at it that way, well, they're both equivalent, four and a half. No, this one's got 3,000 reviews. This one's got 98. Sometimes people say, well, all of these reviews and ratings, they're fake. People bought them. People paid for them. Or there's spam bots that are inflating the numbers. That's a healthy skepticism, but think about it in terms of if you discount half of them. Is 1,500, if I say, well, half of them are fake, is 1,500 enough? I would say that that's still very accurate. Okay, what about half of a half? Uh, fifth, half of 1,500, that's uh, 750. So out of 750, do I believe those? Maybe. If we take half of 100, 50, do I believe that? Do we take half of a half? 25, do I believe that? Maybe not. I can ask people to rate my product for me or maybe pay for it. But the idea is the higher the rating and the number of ratings, the more true it is. And another indicator is how popular is it. 
four million times this has been used compared to 30,000. Now, I would love for my app to have been sold 30,000 times. I'd be rich. But four million is obviously bigger than that. And what else? Compatible. Usually they're always, always, they're, they're often always compatible, so that's not a big deal. Well, actually, this one, untested with your version of WordPress and two stars, but 800,000 installations. That's interesting. It's been installed a lot, but it's been lowly rated, and it's not been tested with my version, so that's interesting. And lastly, the updates. The newer the plugin is, the often times the better it is in terms of security because things that are older than I would say as a sort of starting point of three months the older something is that has not been updated the longer it exists for someone to exploit it for someone to figure out this code is broken I'm gonna hack into this plugin therefore hack into your site so basically the newer it is the better if it's compatible the better the more installations, the better. The higher stars, the better. And then the more of them, the better. So if you can, when you're looking for your own plugins to something that I don't have any experience with, that's what you use in order to figure out what a good plugin is. And you can further click on more details of any of these. Let's say click on the more details of, uh, if you see shop construct, click on more details. If you see any of them, just click more details. Because from this other view, I also see up here reviews. I see actual people. If there are reviews, uh, you will see people's comments. Let me see, that should come up there. Reviews. Oh, there they are. So you might have to scroll down. So if you click reviews and scroll down, So uh, hopefully you see reviews. If you don't, oh, there, there's some reviews there. So um, anyway, that's the idea. Then you also see people's reviews. So this one that I picked randomly had very high reviews, but what about this one? I personally always like to go look at the negative reviews, not for fun, but just to see, well, what, what, why was this person saying they didn't like it? Most people are honest about this stuff, especially when it matters, meaning like I'm trying to sell stuff and this plugin doesn't work. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. So I do often read the negative reviews to get a sense of what might be a, a caveat that I have to worry about. So this is a WooCommerce is supposed to be like simple solution with some understanding, but it's a headache. The plugin break your site conflicts with other plugins, PHP, and when editing, you need an expert. Darn. So, okay, these are legitimate concerns. This person has had a hard time using it because it broke their site and conflicted with their plugins and their version of PHP. If I have um, the same sort of issues, then yes, this is the worst plugin ever, and I'm going to go with another plugin. But the majority of the results are that people say this is a great plugin for what they needed it to do, and therefore they, they picked it as a solution. But this is something to, to look at just to kind of also see um, other opinions. So spoiler alert, the one we're using is WooCommerce. <laughs> That's the big famous one. That's the one that was so good that the WordPress company, the official WordPress company, bought them, probably for millions of dollars, and made them part of the WordPress family. So let's click on install WooCommerce. That'll take a little moment. This is kind of a big plugin. It adds a lot more features to your site. After that installs, you want to then do activate. So let that install and then activate. So I'll take a moment, click install, then activate. The great thing about most of these plugins is that they are usually free and then they have extra features that then you might consider paying for. But uh, I've probably mentioned it in previous classes, but not only do I teach this stuff, but I also am part of a company that we do this stuff for clients. So I'm bringing you stuff from the real world in these classes. And with the various clients that I've worked over the years, it's been over 
well, I, was, I usually say it's been 10 years, but if I think about it, it's since it's been the year 2001, which is more than 10 years. So um, the thing is that I've dealt with a lot of clients throughout the years, and I've seen this stuff evolve. I've been using WordPress since version 2, and now it's on version 5. And this plugin has been evolving so much, especially in the last few years, I guess after they got bought, it really made it better and better. Click Activate. Okay, so there's going to be, this is one of the best things now about it, there's this wizard that walks you through various steps to set up your site. You could click the not right now, but I want to go through most of these screens at the moment. And you would be able to do these settings again later. Um, and the defaults will work fine, but um, I'll point out various things. So this will help configure us. Uh, where is your store based? So let's say these different scenarios. I have the example site of Victor's Bakery. And let's say this was a family-owned bakery that we've had on Main Street for 10 years. And now we're going to get on the on a website because I also want to sell our baked goods on the website. So we have the, the, the baked goods that we sell in the store and we have the baked goods that will ship out. Um, you know, we'll, we'll mail it all over the U.S. or the world or whatever. So uh, where's my store based? Probably you're going to pick the U.S. Um, pick anything that makes sense for you, of course. Your address and all of this. Now, this some of this stuff is important because, um, again, what kind of products am I selling, goods and services, real or virtual? If I'm only selling digitally, if I'm having my, my music to download, for example, or my um, you know, webinars for sale or whatever and no physical location, um, you, you can uh, put something fake there or nothing and, and you'll be okay. But this is for like shipping costs and such if you're selling something. So I'll put one, two, three, fake street. Or whatever you'd like. Zip code, whatever. What currency? Probably dollars. What type of product? I plan to sell both physical and digital, or only physical, or only digital. Question? Uh, I, it won't install it. select here. I'm going to keep it on both physical and digital just for the lecture.
but if you know that your product would only be digital or physical, you can select it. So I'll leave it as both. And this is optional. I will also be selling products or services in person. I'm going to turn that on. All of this can be changed later, but I'm just kind of activating all of the features just so that I can see everything that I can do with this. And I'll turn off the improve usage tracking. This is just a little bit of extra that it's going to send anonymous information back to uh, the WordPress site to kind of track stuff. It's supposed to be anonymous, but uh, I'm just going to turn it off and I'll click let's go. Okay, so there's two, here's the secret. There's two big aspects to e-commerce. One is buying. What's the other? Selling. That's a big secret. Now you know it. Buying and selling is e-commerce. That's a joke. So the thing here is how do I collect money? Uh, WooCommerce here has a way for us to, for people to put credit card, debit card, or a variety of other payment methods. The default it says here is um, I can use this payment collection gateway called Stripe. And this is just a way um, to collect money. People will be able to type their credit card number and such, and you'll collect their money or debit card. This does need to be set up. You need to create a Stripe account and put your bank information and all of that stuff, and then you'll be able to collect money. So not a big deal, but I'm not going to focus on it just yet. But Stripe is one way. Square is another way. You might have seen those little like those little things that plug into someone's cell phone and then they swipe your card. That's one of those Stripe readers. Uh, they've been around um, probably five years at least, and they're a big name also in e-commerce. And then there's PayPal. PayPal's been around literally 20 years since the late 90s. They've been around. They're they're like the big name in payment gateways. So any of these will work for collecting payments. However, for the moment, they're not going to fully work because you need to create an account in each of these if you want to use them. And you only need one of them to be set up. All of them, their purpose is to collect money. How many of you have ever heard of Stripe before? Okay, how many of you have ever heard of Square before? How many of you have a Square account to collect payments? Okay, one person. How many of you have heard of PayPal before? Okay, trick question. And how many of you have a pay PayPal account to collect payments? A couple people. Okay, so this will be something for later for us to do, so I'll turn this off. I'll turn them all off at the moment. I won't have a way to collect payments just yet, but when you eventually set this up, any of them will work. I personally have the most experience with PayPal. Uh, that's the one that I've set up for myself and for clients. It, feels pretty straightforward. Square and Stripe are newer. I haven't used them very recently to determine how good they are, but if they're part of the official installation, they're good. You just have to go through their process, create an account, plug in your, your bank into it, and then you'll be able to collect money. But for the moment, I'll turn nothing on here. And you have also the option of offline payments. These are not really useful at all. But notice these, you've got these other ways. I can, I can accept checks. OK, great. Take me back to the 90s, and I can do that, because no one uses checks. Bank transfers. That's kind of advanced if you want people to wire you money, I suppose. But you know, there's usually big fees with that. Or COD, which is so extinct, no one does that. So these are here, and they're not that useful. And speaking of fees, uh, unfortunately, most of the time when money is involved, it takes money to make money. You might have heard of that expression. And this is the same thing here. I'm going to sell stuff, but it's going to cost me to sell stuff. Uh, have you ever been to a, a restaurant and you try to pay and you give them your card and they say, sorry, we don't accept American Express or Discover or whatever. Well, those credit card companies are charging the restaurant to be able to collect payment. And for some, it's too much. I don't accept American Express because American Express is charging my business too much, so I'll just take MasterCard or uh, Discover or whatever. So same thing here. All three of these will take some amount of money per transaction. And we can go to their sites and look it up, but it's somewhere between 2% and 3% per transaction. 
So that means if you sell something for $100, rounding it up, let's say, they will take $3 out of your $100 that you sold. Obviously, if you sell something for 99 cents, what's 3% of 99 cents? Like one penny? So they will take some amount of money, and that always happens. When you go to Target and you buy stuff at Target, they're getting charged by uh, MasterCard and Visa and American Express and Discover and all of them to do that swipe. And they build it into the price and you never notice it, but they're getting charged. Therefore, you're getting charged. Let's just click Continue for the moment. Okay, shipping. So if I'm going to mail things to people, they buy my product and I ship it throughout the US or the world, this is very important to set up. If I'm doing virtual products, this is not important to set up. But that was back on the store setup, so don't click it. But if you were only going to do virtual products, digital, there would not be that extra screen for shipping, of course, because it doesn't cost any money to ship a virtual thing. But just be aware of that, that if you have real things that you're shipping in the mail, you have a shipping tab right here. And I'll just leave it for the defaults at the moment, a flat rate. Let's say I'm, I'm automatically going to put $5 shipping for all my products. For some it's too much, for some it's not enough. There are uh, extra features later that I can activate so that it knows how much to charge based on weight or distance and all of that. We'll get to that later. Let's say internationally, uh, all over the world besides the US, I don't know, $15. I'm just putting some numbers here. This can be changed later. I'll just say that much globally. I want to be able to print my shipping labels, my postage at home. I don't want to go to the post office. So if I have this extra feature, so this is sort of like a plug-in for a plug-in. That happens as well. You add an extra feature to an extra feature. I'm adding shipping to WooCommerce, which is extra on top of WordPress. I'll turn that off. I, I don't want to do that. I have to go create another account. I have to go do other things. Then I'll be able to, then I need the printer, and I need the paper that's sticky, and all of that stuff. So I just note here that we can print our shipping labels and postage and such from home. And I'll use ounces and inches for my measurements if you're using metric. There it is. And I'll click continue. Here's some optional things. They recommend their official theme. And you probably, especially last week, picked a really nice theme that you wanted to use. For the graded assignment, uh, I want you to stick with the, with the one that they recommend, and then later on you can add the, um, your own that you want later on. As for these other things, if you also want people to um, like your stuff on Facebook and share it, there's an extra plugin. If you also want to email people, uh, if you're subscribed to an, an email newsletter, for example, for deals and such, they have MailChimp. Question? Um, is there a plugin? You know how some websites have a plugin with like, their uh, Google account? Can we do that with WordPress as well? If they want to create an instant account? Yes, there should be a way to instant login with Google and Facebook and all of that. Um, you'd have to look them up on the plugin screen for that, but there's that as well. Okay. Okay, so I, um, if we leave all of these on, it says the following plugins will also be installed and activated if you want these extra things. So some of these extra ones. Um, you can leave them as is, but just so that it's a little faster and we don't, we're not actually going to work with the Facebook or MailChimp, so I'm just going to turn them off so that it doesn't install some of these extra things that I don't even need. And so if I leave these two on up here, it's going to also add the WooCommerce Services plugin and the Jetpack plugin. So just extra plugins that do more things. I think for the moment also, let's turn off automated taxes. So OK, taxes, that's the other thing about being an, an e-tailer, an e-commerce retailer, which is you have to deal with taxes. 
Now, back in the good old days, just a few years ago, there wasn't any taxes on stuff you bought online. Um, you might have heard um, that, you know, Amazon, for example, they've been around 20 years and they didn't have to deal with some of these things that a real store does where they have to charge you tax. And here in San Diego area, you might know that in some areas, the um, sales tax is one thing and in other areas, it's another. Uh, what's the average tax, uh, sales tax, like eight? Eight and a half, let's say eight and a half percent. Some even lower. I know like right over here in National City, it's like one percent more. It's like nine and a half. So even driving onto the other side of the street, the sales tax is different. So it's a big old mess. Automated taxes is supposed to help you deal with that because you are technically supposed to be, if you're a, a, a store in the U.S. especially, paying taxes and all of that, you need to be collecting this stuff and dealing with the IRS and all of that. So this is the part that's like not fun, not glamorous, but important. If you're an e-commerce site, you have to deal perhaps with shipping, with taxes, taxation, getting taxed yourself during tax time. This is the stuff that I can't give too much, cannot give too much opinion about. You need to talk with a tax professional. You know, hire someone or get someone uh, that does the services for free and such. But I'm trying to sell stuff. And how do I set this stuff up? What do I charge? My, my products are XYZ, they cost this amount. What do I need to do? Do I need to make early payments, quarterly payments? What do I need to do? And I cannot advise you on that. You have to talk with a professional. But something like that plugin is supposed to help you set some of that up. So I'm just gonna leave it off for the moment and click continue. Okay, so Jetpack. This is another plugin that gives you extra features. It says better security, et cetera, et cetera. Um, let's say for the moment, we'll skip that at the bottom. So this would be a plugin for a plugin that gives you more features, but I'll just skip it. I can add it later. And it says you're ready to start selling and at the top here it could send you an email if you want if you want to get on their newsletter to keep you up to date with how WooCommerce works tips and tricks and so forth we have the button create a product we have import uh, let's go over to actually what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna copy this link I'm gonna add this link to to the web design folder in a moment. There's a whole bunch of videos that are very useful to learn all about WooCommerce. And you can easily lose track of that link there. So I'm gonna copy that link and I'm going to put it into a notepad file into the network folder in a little bit. So we'll say WooCommerce links. So I'll copy these links. I'll put them into the network folder in a little bit. Let's go to the visit dashboard. Let's say we've gone through the process of installing uh, WooCommerce. I'll visit the dashboard. I have a bunch of new features that will start to appear. Let's do our first break, but first go up to visit your site just to see what it looks like after we've added this new plugin. It will, for example, change your design a little bit to their official theme. And I have a brand new section of shop, which is empty. But then I've got other stuff, checkout and cart, which are also empty. But if you got it up to this point, good. Let's take a little break. And when we come back, we'll talk about adding products and so forth and see what you have to do for the day. It's about 2 o'clock. We'll take a break until 2.10, 10 minutes, and then we'll be back.